guys, and welcome back to another episode of Outcast to Icons. As always, guys, if you are enjoying the series, please do drop a like on the video. That would be fantastic. You might notice I'm actually wearing a Roma shirt. This isn't deliberate. I just happen to have it, and I was. it's one of my sort of, like, workout shirts, and, like, I'm going to do some cycling after this. Uh, so, yeah, I just happen to be wearing it, and it's quite appropriate anyway. So, um... Let's do a question of the day. Let's why the hell not? Let's just jump straight into it. Uh, but a, but a, but a, but a, but a, but a, but a. What is your football on Scottish? What is your football on Scottish football? What is your opinion on Scottish football? Do you support a team north of the border? I am a Hearts fan. Um, I'm not a Hearts fan. That was what the comment said. Um, I I'm half Scottish, so my family, I from Edinburgh. They're all hippies, so they're all hips fans. Um that's i guess where it would be but i don't really support any teams from scotland i mean obviously if i would it would probably be hibs just because that's the family thing but other than that yeah i can't really think um i, I think that the scottish league is just it seems to be getting weaker and weaker since rangers left i know that sounds weird but celtic's performances in europe seem to have tailed off over the last couple of seasons particularly recently um and i don't think that's obviously all down to that but it does seem like that that healthy competition does seem to have enabled them to play better. I don't know. What do you guys think? How is What is the state of Scottish football and what needs to change in order to make it better? If you do have any ideas for your question of the day, drop them in the comments with the hashtag QOTD. Right, let's get into things. Now, we are playing against FC Porto today. And this is kind of strange because I'm actually playing Porto in both episodes I'm recording today on both my saves. It's really strange that that's happened, but that is what's going on. So in the last episode, uh, we hope we tried out different editing style. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to try and do a little bit more of that, potentially on my other save first. Um, so both sets here, and then I'll hopefully try and move over to doing that properly for every episode. And guarantee you when FM16 comes out, every episode will be properly edited like that as well. Um, it's just a question of energy at the moment. Um, so... Right, um, where was he? Where was he? Where was I? Right, um, let's see. So in the last episode, we beat Juventus 2-1. And I know that you can see the result that everyone's going to be looking at right now. And uh, yeah, let's talk about that straight away. Let's just jump straight in. Inter, we beat them 7-0. I don't really know how we beat them 7-0. We weren't 7-0 good in this game. Let's put it that way. Arapi's penalty, uh, firstly, I actually checked. He is the best penalty taker in this club. So... He's staying on penalties. Some other players have got slightly better finishing, obviously, and a little bit more composure, but he's actually not that bad on those either. So I'm going to keep him there because he's not missed one yet for us, I don't think. So, hey, um, Di Placido obviously got one as well. Capra got one too. Two for Zivkovic, an own goal from Perrin, and a goal from Jefferson Marim. 7 nothing after 63 minutes as well. This game could have got worse, but I was just... I actually said it to take a breather because... I just didn't see the point in overdoing it, really. We've got plenty of goals, and I didn't want to get any injuries and stuff like that, as you can see from the early substitutions, because the game was already won. Oh, no, sorry, 67 minutes was the last goal. Um, I'm sorry, it was sixth after 63. Still ridiculous, though, and an amazing win that really did really did the business for us. I think Zivkovic got two goals and two assists in this game or something absurd, which was just marvellous to see. Next up, we had Catania away from home and another clean sheet on the board. And that's what we need, more of these. Di Placido getting another goal for himself. He's not quite at the level as he was last year in terms of his overall goal scoring, but he's still getting the goals and that's the key here. Another keen, clean sheet for Emmerich Boisson. Another decent rating for him. I'm really, really liking his work. Some people have said that um, we should call uh, Kalashnikov the Russian rocket and maybe at some point change his number, uh, his number to number 47. So... Yeah, I can sort of understand why that would be quite funny. So we may do that at some point, but I just really, really like the guy. He's coming across as a really decent player. Both he and Marim are forming a lovely partnership at the back. And generally, our defence is just looking that much better. Antonio's decent too, although we didn't have the best game in this game overall. But a good win away at Catania nonetheless. Next up, we had Bayern Munich. And to be honest, they were still very good. Um, this was all about the first half. Depay put them in front. We actually equalised through Elvis. They then went back in front through Schurter. We then went and equalised again from Alban Arapi from the penalty spot again before Ruben uh, Galliano made it 3-2 at half-time. We did also have to take off Caterini through injury, which was a little bit worrying. Um, so, And also, as you can see, Luca Di Curzio actually had to start this one due to the sort of... Uh, Zivkovic picked up a slight knock in training. I think he was on the bench for this one, but he was completely... Oh, no, he wasn't. Okay, there you go. And, of course, Colt here, Slavy Danchev. You guys seem to really love Slavy Danchev. I, I can't figure out exactly why, but he some, seems to have become, like, a cult hero in this save uh, for some reason. So, hopefully, we'll give him some more game time uh, the rest of the year, although he isn't exactly fantastic. Someone said that they predicted that the end of this series would finish with him putting in the winner in the Champions League final. If that happens, I will eat my hat. I don't have a hat, just so I'm covering my bases, though. I have no hats. I literally, my head is too big to wear hats. I can't wear hats unless I got massive ones, and they just, yeah. It's because of my hair, it's too fluffy. Um, so, yeah, a 3-2... 
defeat against Bayern, as I expected, but it was closer perhaps in the scoreline than maybe it should have been, but it was also closer than I'd expected. So not the worst result in the world. Um, it's the Porto game that's going to be big for us. Napoli next, and Napoli at this point were absolutely running away with the league, and for us to go there and, well not go there and win, but for us to win this game was very, very surprising for me. Paulinho gave them the lead, uh, yeah, that's right, Paulinho, uh, obviously a different Paulinho. Um, Marcelo Di Placido then equalised for us, they then went back in front through Castellano, we then scored two in the last ten minutes through Zivkovic and Di Placido, the dynamic duo to give ourselves probably a slightly undeserved win, uh, is what I would say about that. They were I mean, they shot a lot from range, but still, they probably should have taken more of their chances. Uh, but another good win for us. Two goals conceded at that time, but it is against Napoli, who I genuinely think are going to be one of the main rivals for the title this year, and not perhaps Juve. Although they'll still be in there. Uh, next up, we had Parma. Bottom of the table, Parma. Having their own form of Parma drama right now. And uh, it took us a little while to break them down, though, before Di Placido and Simone Capra gave us a comfortable in the end 2-1 win. 2-0 uh, win, rather. Another clean sheet as well. So that leaves the league looking like this. We are currently top, uh, but only on head-to-head -head with the Napoli game. Uh, look at the amount of goals they've scored. Juventus are down in fifth and are already uh, five points off the pace, so interesting that. Uh, Guido Tuma is the top scorer in the league, but Di Placido is right behind. He's got seven and seven. You can't fault that, but he's still, still not quite up to his standards of last year. New teams, we've got like so Frosinoni, we've got Latina, and I can't remember who else has come up. Um, Milan, you know, it's managed to survive, but are really struggling again. Uh, so I wonder who else did actually... Did anyone else really silly get relegated last year? I can't really remember, to be honest, guys. Um... But there we go. So let's take a quick gander at the squad before we get into today's game. Top goal scorer so far is Di Placido with 8 in 10. Mate, we need at least 1 in 1 from you. That's what we've come to expect from you. We need to see at least 50 goals this season. Uh, Zivkovic has 5, which is again fantastic, though he will leave at the end of the year, which is shocking. Uh, Capra and Arabi have 3 apiece now. As for assists, Zivkovic and Katarini have 4. Katarini did so well in that opening game for us, I think. Why screw it? What was it? He got like three assists in one game already, and he's just sort of failed away a little bit since then, which is a little bit of a shame. Player of the match awards, Zivkovic dominating that as usual. Average ratings, lots of players above seven, which is perfect for me. Uh, Garcia has not had the best start to his season, but he has missed a few games, to be fair. Let's get into the match. We're at home. Porto are actually pretty damn good. Um, they're probably the strongest team in this group, because I don't think Bayern are as strong as they used to be. They're like, I think they came second or third in the Bundesliga so they're actually not the team that they used to be although they're still bloody good because they beat us and they still have Memphis to pie um, but you'll notice that you know Porto did draw though with Lech Poznan in the last game so this all to play for in this group they've dropped points in places I don't think we will drop points so I'm quite confident going into this one if we can get a win against Porto today there's real hope for us actually getting out of this group potentially even as group winners so a quick switcheroo Di Placido Katarini Capra Zivkovic Garcia Falcao Kalashnikov Arapi, Marim, and Antonio, and then Boisson in goal. That's pretty much the strongest team we can physically put out at the moment, and I couldn't ask for anything more. You notice that my assistant did say attacking movement was good for this game, because apparently they are vulnerable in the defence. So, with that in mind, we cannot not go for this. Let's see. I just think that Di Placido, as good as he's been this year, and he has still been very good, I just need that little bit more from him. He's not scoring... I don't know, he's missing a few games here and there. To be fair, he did go on that absurd run right at the start where of his career, and that's probably what probably what did it for him last year. That ridiculous run where he didn't uh he failed to didn't not score uh in a game for just an absurd amount of time. Uh, we could do with a few more assists in this team as well. That they're spreading it about quite a lot, but we want someone like Katarina to really step up for us. But here we go. I still think we could do this today, and I think hopefully we'll be solid at the back with our wonderful defenders that we're getting, because Albert Arapi is a very strong defender, and he's only going to get stronger, it seems. So we're actually building quite a solid back four. I think we've got the back four that could hopefully win us the Champions League one day. I'm just sort of trying to build other areas. If we do have to do it for another season, because I'm not sure we will win it this year, then I'll be looking to strengthen the wings, basically. Because other than that, I think we're looking pretty solid in most areas of the pitch. So, you'd expect uh, Bayern losing against Lech Poznan, guys, just to give you an idea of... The, the changes in this. But that would be pretty perfect, actually, if Bayern could lose to Lech Poznan, because I still think we've got the beating of Lech over two games. We've already beaten them once, and fairly comfortably from what you would have seen from the highlights. Capra out wide to Zivkovic. He's going to shoot. No, he doesn't. Di Placido in the back of the net. Horrific defending. Slid the ball across. Roma won. Porto nil. And we are going top of the group, as things stand, at the halfway stage. And to be fair, we'd have got the away game against Bayern Munich out of the way. We'd only have the really difficult game against... Well, we've got Porto and Lech both away and Bayern at home. So the second stretch of this group is going to be more difficult. That's a given. Capra, lovely little ball through here for Zivkovic. Um, good tackle initially, but it literally sides all the way across the box. Simple tap in for Di Placido and a ninth goal of the season for him. So at least he's scored in today's game. Keeping up that record. Inoso now with the ball in for Porto. Ortiz with the... F okay. 
I assume that was right under the crossbar there because Brassel looked like he was going to get it and then he just didn't. Uh, that's kind of shitty. What happened there? That was a really simple goal to concede. Whipped in. He's almost on the edge of the area. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. He could have caught that. He literally could have just stood there and caught that. Um, but instead, he's divin. Uh, he's divin. He's dove for it. Um, worrying that. But hopefully, we're not uh, all at sea just yet. And we should be able to keep a good foothold in this game. We need to get the ball into the centre. Di Placido picks it up. He's going to lose it here, isn't he? Nobody in support. He's going to go all the way through. And he's... Oh! <laughs> the chance was there. He's creating chances by himself now. Um, he's just like, if you can't create it, I will. Uh, okay, so they're going with that 4 4 one, one kind of system. So... We've got to be careful of the floating number 15. Zivkovic whips that right in and... Oh, I don't know how the ball has not ended up in the goal there, but it hasn't. I didn't even really see what happened. We're definitely looking like the side that's on top in this game, and that's pleasing at least. Another chance from a corner. Zivkovic whips it in. Di Placido with the header. Oh, it's over the... Uh, I don't think that's Di Placido's goal, though. I think that's a Heydari own goal. It is. Roma 2, Porto 1. It's been coming, though. We've been the better team so far, and we do deserve it, but I just wish that this had been Di Placido's goal. It was a good header from him. Um, off the crossbar, bounces back and hits the goalkeeper and rolls over the line. Very, very unlucky from Porto there, but the captain for the day, Di Placido will uh, oh my god another corner whipped in Di Placido again oh Porto looked dangerous uh, look weak from set pieces Capra now and Heydari makes the stop we need to score a second a third goal while we're on top here because we're looking fantastic from set pieces at the moment um sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't today looks like one of those days where the set piece system might well work well for us because we've already had three or four highlights start with us on us on a corner um number 16 could have done a lot better with that really Ortiz Aguila don't just let him... Sl oh, oh, what a save that is from Boisson. I really do like this lad as a goalkeeper. Yeah, okay, he made the mistake for their first goal. Um, but he makes saves like that. And most other goalkeepers in this game, I feel like, would concede those types of goals quite comfortably. Haidari. Now, Porto is starting to come back a little bit now. I'm just going to tell the team to concentrate. Because our ratio to shots on target is not ideal. We've won the ball back, though. Zivkovic has and immediately lost it. Um, it's sort of finely balanced, but we are doing the job right now. It is a win as things stand, but there's still a long way to go in this game, and they could easily flip this on us, and that's what's worrying me at the moment. Aguilar, make the tackle. The ball is so far away from him. There we go. Oh, lovely stuff. Caterini's got to find Di Placido here. He has to. Go short for Capra instead. We're looking for a ball over the top here, I'd say, but no, they've gone short for Di Placido. Going to try and keep the play and actually build up a, an attack rather than just lumping it, which is good to see. Capra, in for Di Placido. Is there a runner off of him? It is. It's Zivkovic. He's through, and I don't really know how they managed to conspire to concede a caller there, but they did. Now we've won one. Uh, oh, Capra goes short here. He's in the box. They've allowed him all the way through here. And yet again, the chance goes begging. I don't think there was actually a shot. I think it was just a misplaced pass. Looks like we're going to get to half time at 2-1. They've come back into it, though. And we need to try and stem that a little bit. An assist and a goal uh, for Di Placido. I assume he gets the assist on the own goal. So he'll take it. He's been a solid player for us tonight. He's done well. Um, but we do need a little bit more out of him in the second half. We've won the ball directly from their kickoff. That is, I've not actually seen that before, I don't think. Usually they at least keep it for a second or two. Oh, here we go. Another corner. Ball in. Di Placido. Will he strike? He does. And it's it's in the net. And it's Albin Arapi with the goal. Roma 3, Porto 1, and Albin Arapi will take the goal. I don't think Di Placido will get an assist for that. But yet again, Zivkovic is just dropping that ball into the middle of the box where Di Placido is waiting. If they keep on allowing that sort of situation to unfold, we will score more goals from corners in this game, basically. It's it's inevitable. They just seem to be so poor from set pieces. For apologies, just burped there while I was speaking. Um, coming up to the hour mark now, we've got the lead, and we're looking comfortable, but... Let's not overthink this. Now, I'm going to bring on Irving Drupal uh, for Jorimo Garcia, and I'm actually going to do it. No, no, we can't, because Di Laurentiis is not there. Hmm, because Zivkovic is not looking fantastic in terms of his fitness levels. I might get Capra off as well um, and switch Elvis and Caterini over, because he's just the fitness levels more than anything. Since we are winning this game by two goals, I'd like to just sort of see if we can manage this gap a little bit rather than trying to extend it too much. Just try to sit on it and manage it a little bit. Um, they are looking a bit tired. Tell you what, just to please you guys, we'll get Slavi Dancev on for the final 10. Because Di Placido is looking knackered anyway. Give Slavi Dancev eight minutes on the pitch. You know, if he scores for us, then that would just be something out of dream world, to be honest. But we've actually turned up the heat in the second half. Zivkovic with the free kick now. Save on the rebound. Oh my god, Albert Arapi, and again! Well, we should have scored on that play. We had two rebounded opportunities and we didn't score. I... have Oh, Zivkovic with another free kick this time, and it's in the back of the net. Roma 4, Porto 1. We've just beaten probably the strongest team in the... Also, can I just point out, Lech Poznan have just beaten Bayern Munich by four goals to nil. And yet we lost in Munich. 
this this group is a bit of a humdinger. I don't really know where this is going to go. So that's given us a lot of hope for the rest of this one. A 4-1 win over, over Porto. What a result that is. That's genuinely a superb victory. Roma 4, Porto 1. Superb stuff. Um, man of the match is going to go to Andrei Zivkovic, interestingly, there, with a 9 overall. I think we can be very pleased with the football we've played, to be honest, guys. That is superb. So there we go. Really solid start to the group, frankly. Halfway through, we've got... Uh, was it six points on the board? I'm pretty happy. If only we could have nicked a draw against Bayern Munich, that would have really done the trick. What done the trick? Done the trick for us. That would have really left them in all kinds of dire straits. But you know, you take what you can get. In the next episode, we are going to be doing. What are we going to be doing? We've got Porto away, and then Lech away. Ah, oh, I want to do the derby against Lazio, but I also want to do that one. I'm tempted to do a double live com of Lazio and Bayern um, in the next episode because I do want to show you guys the Derby game. and I. But it's also... Oh, actually, that's quite a long way away, isn't it? Ah, screw it. You know what? Screw it. We're going to do a big episode tomorrow with lots of games in it with Cecina, Frosinone, Sampdoria, uh, the Porto again, then Albino Lefe, then we'll do the live com against Lazio. We'll do Le... Uh, Poznan, then Torino, and then FC Bayern Munich as well. So, there we go, guys. If you like what you've seen, please do drop a like on the video. That would be fantastic. And if you've liked it even more than that, please subscribe to my channel for more Outcaster icons and from the shadows in your inbox every other day at 7 o'clock. And I will see you guys in the next episode for a double live bomb of Lazio and Bayern Munich. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.